hello guys welcome back to this channel on today's video how we will see how to determine the mass center and shear center for the flow system below so first we'll calculate the center of mass then we'll estimate the center of stiffness or shear center and we are provided with the following information each wall has a thickness of 0.3 meters first step will be to calculate the centroid of this lab or the center of mass of the slab centroid is given by this formula centroidal distance in xc will be summation of area ai multiplied by centroidal distance xi divided by summation of area and for yc it will be summation of ai multiplied by centroidal distance in the vertical direction divided by summation of ai before calculating we have to assign the centroid or more sorry the origin the origin will be zero zero and positive x-axis will be to the left of the origin and positive y-axis will be below the origin so using this previous formula the area will be 2 plus 8 plus 6 plus 4 will be 10 10 multiplied sorry 20 multiplied by 5 plus 1 plus 4 will be 10 so 20 times 10 will be the area and half of this lab in the x direction will be 10 so xi will be 10 so xc will be equals to 10 similarly we can calculate for yc the area will remain the same whereas half of this slab in the vertical direction will be 10 divided by 2 will have 5 meters 5 meters so the centroid or center of mass for the slab will be 10 comma 5 10 comma 5 next step will be to calculate the centroid for each wall since wall 1 and 2 are made up of composite rectangular section we have to calculate each centroid so for wall 1 construct this table you have region a b and c you have centroidal distance xi and centroidal distance yi and the area so in xi will be xi will be half of 2 meters which will be 1 and b will be half of 0 0.3 will be 0 0.15 for region c it will be half of 2 meters which will be 1 and the vertical centroidal distance for region A will be half of 0 0.3 will be 0 0.15 for region B will be half of 10 5 and for region 3 will be 10 minus half of wall C will be uh, region C will be 9.85 so using the previous formula XC will be 0 0.404 and for region YC it will be uh, 5 so centroid will be 0 0.404,5 next will be to calculate centroid for wall 2 construct similar table for wall 2 as in the, uh, in the same fashion as wall 1 and in wall 2 you have two regions region A and region B centroidal distance for region A will be 2 plus 2 plus half of 4 would be 6 and for region B it will be 2 plus 2 plus 4 minus half of 0 0.3 will be <coughs> 7.85 in the vertical direction for region a will be half of 0 0.3 will be um sorry it will be half of 0 0.3 will be 0 0.15 10 minus 0 0.15 will be 9.85 and for region b will have 7.85 Substituting these values in the previous formula, we will obtain centroid for wall 2. So it will be 6.89,8.89. Centroid for wall 3. Wall 3 is a single wall. Hence, centroidal distance, the x will be 2 plus 8, 10, 10 plus 6, 16. Plus half of this wall will be 2. So 16 plus 2 will be 18 and vertical y direction will be 0 0.3 divided by 2 it will be 0 0.15 So we have obtained centroid for wall 3 
to finally calculate centroid for wall 4. For wall 4, we'll use similar formula and we'll reach with the values of 9.19.85,8. Next will be to calculate the moment of inertia for each wall. Since wall 1 is made up of three individual sections, we have to calculate the moment of inertia of each individual section and superimpose them or add them. So we'll use parallax theorem. So the moment of inertia in the x axis can be determined using the following formula Ix will be Ix plus area, distance in the y squared. And you can remember from your previous courses that the moment of inertia is given by 1 over 12 base times height cube for a rectangular section plus area yi is centroidal distance for the whole wall minus y centroidal distance for that individual section for example for ixa it will be 1 over 12 the base is 2 times the height is 0 0.3 cubed the area is 0 0.6 5 is the centroid of the whole system in the y direction for wall 1 minus 0 0.15 0 0.15 is centroid for only region A so we have obtained 14.118 meter the power of 4 in similar fashion we can calculate centroid uh, the moment of inertia for region B and C finally add region A B and C to obtain moment of inertia or second of moment second moment of inner area in the x direction sorry so it will be 14.9.001 the moment of inertia in the y will be calculated in similar fashion except in the previous formula we have used dy squared but in this case it will be dx squared and in the case of moment of inertia you have to use 1 over 12 base cubed height when you calculate moment of inertia in the y-axis base cubed h base cubed h so iya will be for example 2 cubed the base cubed multiplied by height divided by 12 area remains the same 0 0.404 is the centroid for the whole wall minus 1 and we are left with well, we'll obtain 0 0.413 so in similar fashion we'll calculate for region B and C finally superimposing them we'll obtain the moment of inertia in the y-axis it will be 1.0094 for wall 2 the moment of inertia ix2 of region A will be 1.138 and for region B will be 2.44 superimposing IX2 will be 3.578 meter the power of 4 moment of inertia of wall 2 in the Y axis will be IY2A will be 2.55 meter the power of 4 and IY2B will be 1.0131 meter the power of 4 superimposing will obtain 3.581 meter the power of 4 Moment of inertia for wall 3, wall 3 is single wall, so we calculate only one moment of inertia and it will be 0 0.009. So the numbers indicate that the moment of inertia in the X is almost zero and the wall has lesser or small resistance in case of earthquake in the X direction and in the Y direction we'll obtain a moment of inertia of 1.6 meter the power of 4. Can calculate the moment of inertia of wall 4 in the similar fashion as in the case of wall 3. So finally to calculate the shear center we have to construct this table. First column is made up of wall. You have four walls, wall 1, 2, 3, 4. Then construct a table showing moment of inertia in the x-axis, then showing moment of inertia in the y-axis colon that's made up of centroidal x, uh, distance xi centroidal distance yi and the product of ix xi and the product of iy 
iy multiplied by yi. These values are obtained in the previous steps. So the next task is to summation, to form a summation, summation of moment of inertia in the x-axis and summation of moment of inertia in the y-axis and summation of moment of inertia in the x multiplied by a centroidal distance xi and summation of moment of inertia in y multiplied by a centroidal distance yi. Shear center in the x direction is given by the product of ix xi divided by summation of ixi. So 76.33 divided by 54.118 shear center will be 1.41. And the shear center in the y direction will be summation of iyi multiplied by yi divided by summation of iyi. So 37.297 divided by 6.219 and it will be 5.99 so the shear center will be 1.41 comma 5.99 so we have the shear center one can easily calculate the eccentricity you can subtract the x coordinate of the mass center or centroid to that of x coordinate of shear center you can if if you want to determine the eccentricity in the y direction you can subtract ys shear center in the vertical direction minus ym so this is how you determine center of mass and shear center if you have any questions please leave it in the section comment section below thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next video